so gledam, če je Herald TV polovina ranka majmo ga co jokar. Welcome to 2022 Qatar World Cup. 62 games are over. Only two more are remaining. The first one on Saturday at 8.30 p.m. That uh, to decide the third and uh, the fourth place. And that's uh, again Morocco and Croatia. And uh, the great event, the finale on Sunday at 8.30 uh, when uh, France, the holders, meet uh, with uh, Argentina uh, in the last uh, final finale of uh, this uh, great event held in Qatar. We have been talking about the winners, runners-up and the participating teams. The winner will get $42 million in prize money. We have uh, here with us uh, Dr. Michael uh, Dias from the Dempo College of Commerce and Economics, who is still playing football. I believe yesterday he has played in an intervillage uh, uh, football tournament. And uh, welcome back uh, once again, Dr. Michael Dias. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. And we have another stalwart now. Uh, who has been coaching and has undertaken a lot of coaching, uh, women's, uh, men's, uh, and he's totally busy now, uh, dedicated to the coaching. And uh, he is our assistant professor from St. Xavier's College in Mapsa and assistant professor Voral D'Souza. Thank you so much. Welcome. Sir. Despite uh, getting 12 stitches on the hand, <laughs> he had some uh, emergency and accident, he has uh, made it possible to be with. Uh, Bend it uh, with Herald TV. So grateful to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, what is important? We have been describing. They play. They will win. They lose. They participate. Forty-two million dollars in prize money. The runners-up get a uh, thirty million dollars. So you can imagine. And a grueling contest is expected between current uh, World Cup champions France and Lionel Messi-led Argentina. Both will take a shot at winning the title for the third time in the history of the World Cup. Argentina won the trophy in 1978 and 1986, while uh, France achieved the glory in 1998 and 2018. If you think only the two teams uh, get the prize money, that's because normally that's what uh, we give to our teams in India, especially Goa. It's the winner and the runner-up. What happens to the others? They get nothing. Third team place gets $27 million. Fourth place gets $25 million. All those who have reached the quarterfinals, Brazil, Netherlands, Portugal, they will earn $17 million because they have reached the quarterfinals. Then a round of 16, they will get $13 million each. U.S., Senegal, Australia, Poland, Spain, Japan, Switzerland, South Korea. And uh, then you have the others who have just participated. I think here to participate in Goa, you have to give money. And without that, uh, they don't take. But here, for participating, they give you money. Qatar, Ecuador, Wales, Iran, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, Denmark, Tunisia, Canada, Belgium, Germany, Costa Rica, Serbia, Cameroon, Ghana, Uruguay, they will get $9 million each. So multiply the dollar is now how much, uh, Dr. Michael? 80, something. 80. So 80 into 9 million. It's worth playing football. That's huge. That's, uh, that's pretty huge. Big money, big money. And uh, we have uh, some uh, not so pleasant news uh, that uh, our uh, Messi is showing... Uh, some uh, injury on the left uh, hamstring did not come for the practice match and uh, on the other side we have Karim uh, Benzema returns uh, <laughs> to coaching and uh, there is a slot for him because uh, France has not changed uh, the one place which is uh, in his name and then we have uh, something which normally see normally in Indian and uh, Goan football, protest. Morocco has filed a complaint with uh, the FIFA over the refereeing
problems in the semifinals against uh, referee Cesar Ramos. I don't think so. Do you think will anything uh, change the outcome with uh, this protest by Moroccan uh, uh, Federation? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that would be specific to the case of Bufal being foiled and being given a penalty. Uh, yeah, well, they, say, they say they say Hernandez is the one who actually uh, pushed him and uh, it is uh, the other uh, player who got the yellow card. I don't think so and it would have not made any difference to the result of the game because uh, the goals that were scored were clear cut and uh, very evident and uh, at the at the most I think if possible they might just pull off the yellow card from him. I don't think so there is any other reason to... But uh, normally on points uh, of uh, fact it is final. The referee's decision yes, is final. Yes, the referee on the field of play whatever decision he makes it's final. Well, we, yes. we often we say that he's a uh, god. He's the final yes, judge. Final authority yeah. on the field. Unless it's a point of law. But yes. it's uh, uh, pretty difficult. What do you say Warren? Uh, yes, uh, in fact, there are there have been mistakes taken uh, um, uh, previously by referees. It happened with Arsenal where Gibbs was shown the card, uh, the red card mistakenly. But uh, at last, it wouldn't change, as Michael said, it wouldn't change the outcome of the game. But yes, they would take a note of it. Probably they would you know, take a call on that referee in future. But regarding the outcome of the outcome game... Outcome is a yes, it's foregone whatever conclusion. Whatever referee is taken yes. on the field is final. Ahead of the final, Argentine captain Lionel Messi has announced that he would retire from international football for his nation after the title clash. Messi is eyeing the first ever World Cup trophy win of his started career. We concentrate on the final. I know both of you are for France. That uh, I know. But uh, let us examine yet whether uh, what could be the outcome and what is the expectation. We'll start with Dr. Michael. Uh -oh. Going into the finals, I believe France has an edge and as news that you have said that uh, Lionel Messi is showing concerns regarding his left hamstring, uh, it will be a huge setback if in case he stays out. But uh, given the fact that this is his last match, uh, last World Cup, he would not want to stay out. Yes, I am sure that he is going to play the game. And uh, it will be an interesting game, full action packed. Uh, and uh, I don't think so any team is going to give anyone uh, easy game to lift the trophy. It will be uh, worth watching. Worth watching. Don't you feel that you should have been in Qatar? <laughs> Very much. <laughs> Very, yes, definitely. Yeah. And then uh, there will be also those who will expect Mape because he is aiming to win the second World Cup title of his career having already achieved the feat in 2018. Basically, it will be Messi, M, Messi, M, M, Mape. Yes, sir, absolutely. If you see, they, they, they are pitting both against each other. They are saying Messi versus Mbappe. Both have four goals to their names. And now if you see, they are playing for the same club. They are sharing the same dressing room. But as you said, if Messi is not playing the finals because of the hamstring, it will be a setback. But the good news for France is that Benzema is also training with them. So both, and if you see, France have started with a bang. Me, uh, Argentina has not started with a bang. But across the tournament, as they have progressed, both have come up and they have reached the finals. But uh, they depend on these two strikers. Argentina, the fulcrum of their uh, yes. strike is these two, Alvernas and Alvarez. Messi. Yes. Now, without Messi, it could be a major problem. Yeah, because he is not just a striker. But if you see the number of assists that he had done, and very crucial ones. In fact, uh, the second goal... Uh, scored by Alvarez was purely yes. uh, Messi's total, this total. Is total. Yes. and uh, he did it so intelligently he went went and uh, told the others now you please come up uh, you'll get a chance and you just try yes. that's a uh, yes. brilliant uh, he dissects problem. the defense completely and lays it across yeah. for his uh, they say that this is the first time that he's not playing the role of a main striker yes. but he's just behind Fidiron. do you feel so also yes Warren? surely sir in fact the assist to Molina the first goal, the no-look pass was excellent. No one expected him. In fact, the way he took the ball, the three, three strikers, he just took the ball. No one expected him to give a pass to Molina who was coming from, from outside and he just scored the first goal. I think more than scoring now, his assists are brilliant. The way he takes the ball, he pulls all the defenders and he opens up space for the strikers. That's the reason why French uh, coach, he said his team would try to find a way of countering Lionel Messi who is in scintillating form for Argentina? I think they will have to find a way of Messi not receiving the ball. Because once he receives the ball, then it is difficult to stop. I don't think so there is any other player to stop him 
once he receives the ball. We saw it the other day with Croatia. They are one of the best uh, upcoming defenders. He just took him for a ride. And uh, France, they are uh, aiming to become the first team in 60 years to win back-to-back -back World Cup titles after Brazil's double victories in 1958 and 1962. France must prepare to face an Argentina side which has been inspired in their way to the final by Messi and who will be seeking revenge for a 4-3 defeat when the teams met in the last 16, four years ago. Yes, sir. In fact, the last time when, when they have met, uh, France was victorious. But this time, Argentina is more balanced. They have a more balanced team. Okay, although we have Mbappe, we have Griezmann, we have Giroud, who's playing for France as strikers. But the Argentina have a more balanced team this year. So, so it, will... it could go into extra yes. time and then ultimately penalty shootout. But if, uh, let me add, if in case, as you said, Benzema, Benzema is fit and is going to be in the team, I wouldn't be surprised Benzema taking the limelight and uh, scoring the winner in the game. But uh, he has not been uh, with the team. So, we do not know how good or bad he but will He's tell. been playing for so many years and I, <laughs> the, the main uh, core of the team is the same. Okay. What do you say, Warren? Yes, Benzema could make a difference, but we don't know whether he's still niggling with that injury or what is it, whether he's 100% fit. Uh, maybe he'll come for the second half, maybe they, the coach will start with him. But yes, a uh, confidence booster if Benzema comes in, but at last it all, how the team gels. Because uh, it, it can have a psychological yes. effect. Yes. That's what Dr. Michael, I think, yes. uh, uh, is... Uh, he's been known at Real Madrid to score those crucial goals. Wherein the uh, captain of the yes. Real Madrid yes. team, winner of EFA yes. Cup. So, all yes. that will have a psychological. Yes. And we don't have our sports psychologists and today. Kiru, Griezmann, I think they are going to be a lot of for the defenders of Argentina to hold on. Yes, yeah, so yeah. very interesting. I, I think uh, we are having a lot of points to be discussed uh, in this program, which is supported by Decathlon Kalangut, Martin's Corner Batalvatim, Adlengoy Family Restaurant. Doria Degar Multi Cuisine Restaurant, Old Goa, and Martin's Place Village Bistro, Navilim. Stay back with us. Do not go away. We'll be coming back very shortly. Please do drop in at a small little family restaurant called Adelaide Goy, which is just five minutes from Basilica of Bon Jesus and Say Cathedral. In this small restaurant, we serve authentic Goan cuisine and we are known even for our fresh fish, chicken, mutton, etc. Also, we are known even for the other cuisines like tandoori, Indian, Indo-Chinese. So why don't you come over? Also, we have full fetch bar and our bartenders do really good, amazing cocktails and mocktails. And also, most important point, we are having a live premiere of the FIFA World Cup. So do drop it with your family and friends and for reservations, dial the number on the screen. Today we are at Martin's place and the ambience, thank you ambience are getting so different. Like look at this, so spacious and so nice. You feel like dancing. So let's cheers for it. The food here is next level. Like it's so good and so the prawns guys, they were so kurkurit. Like it is approved by Mr. Kurkurit. So look at me, eat them. Any Goan sausage stuffed sweets. Wow. Kitiya lakta le reyo. Saam ke card is boom bang a bang boom bang zata. Any tenge signature dish mila mare stuffed crabs. Kitiya lakta abara pure crab meat, white wine, any cream, any cheese gun. Jona hai mera ami prawns pula ani chicken kafriyal. Kafriyal ki lakta har ke chod bare to pula. Ah, welcome back. You are watching uh, Band Eight with uh, Herald TV. We have been talking about the grand finals to be played on a sunday at 8 30 pm it is uh, france the holders versus argentina and uh, the focus has been on messi because he has been in scintillating form and this was acknowledged even by the french manager four years ago things were different messi played as a center forward whereas now he is playing in a among the front to two or just behind the main striker. He looks in great shape and of course he is one of the best players in the world. So we will try to counter Messi's threat as much as possible. Just as much as Argentina will try to stop the influence of some of my players, said the French coach. What is uh, your reading about uh, 
the stars that we'll be seeing tomorrow, both in Argentina as well as uh, in France. I think all the famous players that we know of, uh, Mbappe, um, Griezmann was the man of the match in this last that he played against Morocco, uh, the semi-finals. Then we have Giroud who has been doing well, but I, I believe he still has something to still give in the finals. Uh, he came very close to scoring in the semi-final uh, and if Benzema comes, it will be an added boost to the team. So, I believe all these stars are going to come to the front. But not to forget the goalkeepers, Loris of uh, France and uh, oh, tennis. Yes, of uh, Argentina. Yes. Both have been in yes. excellent form too. Now, Real Madrid star Karim Benzema has returned to training ahead of the World Cup final. The striker is still registered in France's star-studded squad. Several household names were earlier ruled out of the event due to injuries. Karim Benzema and uh, Christopher Kunku joined France's lengthy injury list days before the start of the event. After Ballon d'Or holder, he's a holder, Benzema was ruled out of the Qatar World Cup, the coach opted not to seek a like-for-like like replacement for the Real Madrid captain. France instead decided to continue with 25 players and the reigning world champions lived up to high expectations in Qatar. Interestingly, Benzema has a return to training ahead of the final. Will Benzema feature in the final on Sunday? Remember that Benzema guided Real Madrid to UEFA Champions League glory la last season and has recovered from the thigh injury it is uh, learned. What do you feel? Yes, in fact, in Real Madrid also after Ronaldo leaving, Benzema has taken the limelight. He was scoring. In fact, it was setback for France. They have lost three key players. They have lost Pogba. Angolo Kante and Benzema. In fact, the coach had to change his formation from his normal 4-3-3 formation, what he used to always play. He had to just change it uh, and keeping in mind that probably Benzema will return. But now Benzema in the team and scoring and as you said, sir, he is the winner of the Ballon d'Or. I think it makes a huge difference psychologically and the strength for the team with a striker who is in form coming in as a team. So, so you think uh, uh, chances could be very high for uh, France? France. You yes. think so? Yeah, but if Messi plays, uh, the only mistake that Didier might make is trying to block him out after he receives the ball, which will be very difficult to contain Messi after he receives. Because then, as you said, he's not, he, he doesn't play as an all-out striker. Yes. Okay, he plays a little withdrawn and feeds those balls, takes the defence on him, beats those defenders and finds those crucial passes for the striker just to tap in. They are just to do the, the finishing, type. finishing, nothing yes. else. The main work is uh, shouldered by, by him. So, uh, we have a uh, uh, lot of uh, prizes to be given, awarded after the final. Individual prizes like the Golden Boot, Golden Glove, Golden Ball Awards and uh, Golden Boot, you know who are uh, in line. There are four contenders. Yes. Okay. On five goals is uh, Messi yes. and uh, Mbappe. Mbappe. And on four goals is Alvarez and Chiru. Yes, and, and both on four goals each. And yeah. all four are playing the final. Yes, so, <laughs> so it can, it be, can anyone, be anyone. Should there be a tie, it will be decided by using a tiebreaker criteria. First assist, then fewer minutes are played. Messi has got three assists. Yes. Mape has got two assists. Messi has played 570 minutes. Mape has played 477 so far. Then we have the Golden Glove, best goalkeeper, decided by the FIFA Technical Committee. And the winner is normally the goalkeeper who progressed furthest in the competition. You know who they are. Yes. Uh, you have got Argentina, Martinez. Martinez. You have got uh, France, yes. Hugo. You have got Croatia, Dominic. You have got Bruno. Bruno. So four Bruno. goalkeepers Bruno. Uh, in progress. And then we have got the Golden Ball for the best player at the World Cup. This will be a very, very tricky. Yeah, I believe Messi is up there for that. This so, the, the, final, the final will decide the final outcome. Final will decide the outcome. So, it's safe to suggest either Messi or Mape. Yes. 
main contenders. Main contenders. Yeah, but uh, there are also other midfield maestros. You have got uh, Modric, uh, Griezmann, uh, <coughs> Liva Kovic. You have got Hakimi. They also have played uh, their role pretty well. But I think uh, you can't uh, touch Messi or Mape. He has been shouldering the whole team as such. Uh, not just uh, scoring the goals, but providing those crucial assists. And Messi is a previous winner in 2014 after losing the final against Germany. So, what do you say? Yes, sir. They are both in power. I mean, they have reached the finals. Both Mbappe, Messi, even Luka Modric to some extent, but unfortunately, didn't reach the finals. But Mbappe, now it all depends on who performs for the final. And I think there it will be the decider of who gets the golden ball. And uh, Mbappe is aiming to become the second youngest player with two World Cup titles to his name. It would be an impressive accomplishment for the 23-year-old with only Pele, two times winner, but he was 22 ahead of him. What uh, a distinction it would be. Yeah, you want to say something? Yes, sir. It is not that Mbappe is just tagging along with the team. He's performing, he's up there, he's scoring goals. And for now, he's sharing the goals with Messi, five goals each. So, great achievement for this uh, youngster at this age of 22 to come up at that level with so much of competition, so much of the, um, perseverance, dedication needed at this stage and to perform and to score those goals. Really, absolutely great. Uh, with all this, there have been demonstrations. And in one of the demonstrations uh, in France, a 14-year-old boy was killed uh, in the uh, Wednesday night as riots broke out in France after France beat Morocco. Uh, out of the World Cup in the semi-finals. The young boy, looks to be a Moroccan, was run down by a car. A group who appeared to be Moroccan fans gathered around the car. The car had a French flag out of its window. The group attempted to rip the flag of the car, causing panic reaction from the driver. The car did a U-turn to get away from the group but uh, a teenage boy was caught under the wheels of the vehicle and sustained serious injuries and he was taken to the hospital and uh, uh, was declared dead. When Morocco beat Portugal, there were about 20,000 Morocco fans descended on the streets in France to celebrate the nation's first, becoming the first African and Arab nation. There were also riots. <laughs> because there's a quite a, a, a massive population of Moroccans. There were also problems of violence in Belgium, where hundreds of supposed Moroccan fans launched fireworks. And France and Belgium are both at home to a large Moroccan community, many of them who have dual citizenships. This is off the field, but it is a sad story that uh, when everybody is enjoying having uh, a nice time, that uh, people indulge in this type of behavior. What do you say about this fence? Uh, it is very sad to hear because uh, football is a game which uh, brings people together. And uh, to hear such news of uh, crimes being committed or uh, protests or demonstrations outside the field wherein they, with no linkage of the match, uh, it does hurt. It does and uh, doesn't speak well. So, we have uh, <coughs> the match for the third place tomorrow. It's Morocco versus Croatia. They played once uh, in the group and they drew goalless. So, they know each other pretty well. What do you think about tomorrow's match? Yes, as you said, they have played their group stage match. They were both in Group F. They have played a goals to draw. Croatia have come up the ranks. They have defeated Japan. They have defeated uh, Brazil. They have come to the semi-finals and... Morocco is no less. They have defeated Spain, Portugal. Okay, so both are beaming with confidence. It all depends now who has the next edge. We have Luka Modric in Croatia and we have Ziyech in Moroccan team. Both are good players, one of them or probably the team and we have good defenders in both the teams. Excellent. In fact, defenders who will be up for grabs, in fact, clubs will be looking out for them. Both the teams, they are, we have excellent defending by both the teams. So, let us see who takes at last the third place. Don't you think that both of them would want to finish third? Yes, uh, definitely. And uh, uh, Morocco, I believe, uh, will be going all out because during the group stages as well as the quarterfinals, pre-quarters, you saw both these teams playing a defensive game and then would go on the counters to get the goals. But I believe uh, for the 
third place they will be both going out on attack i believe believe that dr michael i i agree with you on this because morocco has broken so many records by getting the furthest any african nation ever has uh, uh, gone before both have very strong records it will be a tight and tense game as both sides have their pride to play don't you feel so moral yes sir. both both of them will, were trying to prove a point uh, as you said the african side to reach the semi finals and croatia have been in the semi finals last year this year again they have come so both of them would want that extra point to go a mile ahead and win the third place for their country now moroccan football federation it's uh, in short f m r f they felt that morocco they were deprived of two penalties that were indisputable in the view of several refereeing specialists who are outsiders they were astonished that the var did not react to these situations the protest they said we have lodged in order to defend the rights of the team demanding fairness what do you have to say about the lodging of the complaint they say complaint not even protest uh, they may feel but uh, as a viewer of the matches i feel the decisions were quite fair and uh, at the end of the day it is a referee who is a final authority it is in his opinion whatever he feels because it's he doesn't get to see the vr and all those things he makes it based on the what he, what he sees and i believe we should go vr is there for assist, assistance if in case he feel there's a doubt certain angle that is not been able to see and then he can go and report but every to minute or uh, every half an hour or every hour you can't ask vr it, it, it breaks the flow of the game yes it does break the it flow. does and the referee uh, is empowered to take decisions yes sir because he is he is closest to the game he is the person who is in the game and he can see it first hand we yes we can see a replays we can see different camera angles but on field whatever decision he takes sometimes is the final decision yes we have technology nowadays we have we are we have so many so much of technology but sometimes we stick to the referee's decision because even we are feels the same whatever the referee takes so, all field so does one mean that uh, a day will come where there will be no physical referee but it will be all done by the machines no i don't think so because that will take the charm out of the game because the flow of the game because the referee adds that charm because the moment you remove the referee out uh, it, it it the the flow of the game will be stopped completely what do you feel yes after all sir a machine will always stick by the rules but a referee will t- will have thinking you can you can't put thinking into the machine you can put rules into the machine so at last if there's no referee the thinking of the game when to give a decision when to play advantage probably the machine wouldn't do mushin would if it's a fall he would stop for a fall but nowadays there are situation where a referee would give advantage the mushin probably may never understand that because a mushin can never think it can just follow rules uh, they say that uh, referee sazar ramus denied morocco two penalties in the first uh, semi final the first incident uh, happened when morocco's forward uh, bofal was booked for a foul on teo hernandez in the box Hernandez is the one who collided with Bofal but the referee gave Bofal the yellow card this was felt by most of those who uh, have seen and those who were there the second one which uh, even i didn't uh, notice was when substitute Salim Amala was uh, later dragged down in the France area as he awaited a free kick delivery referee Ramos chose not to award a spot kick i mean uh, uh, in the second one i don't see any reason so in the second one i think he could have gone for vr because he had not seen the incident at all because in the reviews they were showing that uh, the player was grabbed by the defender so that was by the but by that time he had already started the game uh, but what morocco now has asked is to for a review of the refereeing decisions I don't know whether uh, that is possible and they said we are astonished that the video assistant referee did not react to these uh, situations but they were not very grave instances which could have uh, changed the outcome of the game or at that point of time to stop the game yeah so what do you think uh, warrel yes as michael said there were not incidences that would change the outcome but yes morocco upset with the decisions because it uh, they felt that it was their team who were playing and two they felt these were two harsh decisions they have made a protest a formal protest but uh, they could have referred to var 
the second incident so they could have referred but didn't refer referee didn't feel that he should refer to var because it was not changing anything probably so he carried on with the game so i and think the, uh, tomorrow's uh, one uh, match but i think everybody is uh, focusing on the final Fine. are you both also yes uh, one player i would like to highlight yes. from uh, morocco yeah. is amrabat he the defender captain moved out and he was forced to go to the defense and uh, i i believe there'll be a lot of offers coming up for him because he was really outstanding in the whole tournament yeah uh, what are and, you, and you same, wanted to add yeah, something yeah and same i think with croatian defender guardel guardel one of the best defenders yes, they have, yes, they have made. Yes, yes. and one mention i would like to do is about since we have started with a lot of cash prize with gh uh, all the money that he has got till today for his national team he has just donated it to the families and to the staff of the moroccan team is so it? great yes great i think this gesture is something great which a he great has done. humanitarian yes. gesture so on that note uh, we come uh, to a close of uh, this episode of uh, bandit with haral tv uh, in the first place my gratitude to dr michael and warrel a uh, lot of effort and sacrifice from your part and we cannot uh, uh, retribute what you have done for us it is very, a pleasure to be here sir. very grateful thank you, thank you and uh, to all our viewers stay tuned it's not over we are there on uh, saturday tomorrow we are there on sunday and we are there last to bring down the curtains will be on monday when it will be over and uh, till then bye bye See you.